Hey everybody, uh, I thought I would do this a little differently uh, than I normally do. Uh, I did a montage last time of like a slideshow and everything for my military cosplay vlog. This is of course about cosplay, filling your cosplay out, making it look right. But I thought I would do this a little differently. Um, I figured I would just show you my cosplay and give you and convey kind of the evidence that I have for what I have in a very um, successful cosplay. Now again, the whole point of military cosplay is to convey a message of, you know, this is a tough guy, this is a military worker, this is an enforcer, this is a soldier, marine, sailor, what, whatever you're cosplaying as, you want to ensure that you're doing it right. And that goes for, you know, historical stuff and whatnot, but I'm talking about, in my personal case, you know, military cosplay. Now, the armor filling it out is actually quite simple. Ensuring that everything is filled out, but appropriately. Now, if you had just a regular combat vest, you know, nothing special, you don't want to overfill it with pouches. For one, it's just unnecessary weight, and for two, it clutters the cosplay, and it doesn't look uniform. Again, you want to do uniformity. Uniformity is important. Sometimes less is more for certain cosplays. In the case of the Juggernaut, it's, it's a difficult thing to balance. Again, this is the sixth generation of this cosplay. Uh, this is nothing to shake a stick at. This is not something that you can just do in one night. Sometimes it takes work. Uh, part of the um, game with military cosplay is the psychological game, making people believe you are who you say you are. Again, um, for me, it's, you know, patches, uh, identification of who you are, uh, the juggernaut. I work for Umbrella Corporation, places you've been, I'm a Kansas Airsofter. I live in Kansas. Uh, little grenades and stuff like that. Again, orange tape to indicate that it's a toy. Again, I'll get into that a little later. Uh, pouches with magazines loaded up. Um, again, um, you want to make it look functional because, again, most military cosplay, as we know, is functional and it's important to convey that. Um, again, the great part about military cosplay is it is actually really functional in real life. I can stick plates and uh, stuff like that inside of this and have no trouble walking around all day long. That's the great part about it. Another really cool thing is is that, you know, um, if I need to go to a long convention and I'm wearing this all day, it supports my back and my hip and my knee. Again, you can customize this to help you get through the day. Again, I've got a lot of physical problems and so this suit is actually like putting on an Iron Man suit. It, it's great. It protects me and it keeps me uh, physically whole and capable to uh, go through the day. And that includes shin guards, thigh, butt plate back here, groin protector, um, Kevlar arm plates, uh, shoulder pads, um, Juggernaut's signature neck guard sort of thing, uh, all these pouches, uh, utility pouches, uh, communications pouch, mag pouches, uh, more mag pouches. I kind of put M40, uh, I put 40 millimeter grenade launchers and shells in this one. Um, again, uh, you're not a Juggernaut unless you have some sort of grenade set on you for some reason. Again, a communications rig is a great thing. Uh, small tip, uh, play the Weather Channel or some sort of uh, public access communications network. Again, keep it low, but to where you can hear the radio crackle, the chatter, the random talking. People aren't going to notice it immediately, what they're saying, but they're going to take notice of you. They're going to hear you. They're going to, they're going to hear... Uh, a part of it is controlling the senses of what you can. I mean, they can't taste you, per se, and I definitely don't think they want to smell you if you smell sweaty in there. But again, hearing is an important part of our sensory, and the great thing is, is if you can hear this big suit clanking around, or um, you can hear the radio chatter and the boots screeching against the floor, or the guns jiggling and the metal pieces jiggling, that conveys a sense of um, a fully loaded person ready to rock and roll, like a, a loaded up soldier and everything like that. So, you know, just keep it, keep that in mind when you're doing this. And again, um, practicality is important, but don't overload. Again, I've taken these patches off a million times and putting them back on. Uh, patches, again, indicate who you are. Um, the neck guard is kind of a thing that kind of indicates, you know, you know, that you're a juggernaut or a bomb suit, EOD. Again, I'm a juggernaut, there's a big difference. Uh, again, the radio's antenna sticks out, it kind of makes you look like a military combat vehicle, because you are essentially a walking tank as a juggernaut. Again, the back is just as important. They want to, you want to look uh, just as uh, loaded up on the back as you are up front. So, you know, you dump pouch, 
butt plate, uh, medic pouch. This has real medicine and band-aids, bandages, in case something happens. You know, because people repair cosplays and they hurt themselves, and or they can cut themselves. Again, tape for guns or for helping repair your fellow cosplayer stuff. Again, be useful. You know, that's the great part about community in general is just helping people. Hydration pouch to keep me from dying of heat stroke. <laughs> that's an important one. Uh, again, this is Aegis Six uh, A Six uh, is the code for it. The Wraith. Um, Juggernaut is my uh, call sign for my Umbrella Corporations group. Again, these glow, which is really cool. And you got my girlfriend on the back of there, kind of a, uh, you know, an homage to the tankers and the bomber pilots of old. Uh, again, the great part about the Juggernaut cosplay, again, is getting into the final part of the cosplay itself, other than the weapons, is conveying a message. Um, when I walk into cons, people are frightened at first, you know. Uh, again, it's great to have a buddy to tell people that you're okay. Again, checking in with the security staff, telling them that you're not going to hurt anybody is a good start. Again, I'll get into that a little later. But, um, you know, I built this suit with psychology in mind. You're going to go, what, well, what do you mean, Jess? What do you mean by psychology? Well, it's all black in this case. Again, if you're doing other colors like uh, tan, gray, um, you know, olive, uh, woodland, any other thing like that, I would recommend breaking up the colors, but the great part about black is it's cohesive. It works well together. You can add gray, you can add tan, you can add anything, and it'll look good, but black is emotionless. It is a void. It is, absorbs all light. It is a scary thing to look at, because a part of human psychology, and this is my kind of like, uh, point plan on this, is A, uh, dark is scary. Uh, dark conveys no emotion. It conveys no um, physicality. It conveys no skin color. It just is dark in this sense. You know, there's no way to tell when I've got my compression shirt on and my BDUs of who's underneath that mask because everything is covered uh, with the gloves and everything like that. So you don't know who's under there. You don't know what they're doing. And again, when they come in and they see this guy possibly with an airsoft gun or a riot shield like this one here and they see this mask, uh, again, um, you see no emotion, and the thing about this is, is when I put all this on, and I'm going to move this back real fast, so I can kind of work with this a little bit better, but, um, <sighs> sorry, it's been a long day, <laughs> but, um, the moment I walk in, the way I've designed this is, this is gray, this is different, and like the red piece, it draws your eye up. You, you look at this and you see your, you see the clumping. It's all about how you carry yourself. You want to do the feet by fo thumb walk almost. And they see it. They spot center mass. That's where all the body parts are. Your emotions are going to have you, um, genuinely, your psychology is going to have you look up. You're going to see the large mass and you're going to look up to find a face, find eyes, find some sort of detail to distinguish whether or not this is friend or foe. This is basic human psychology, basic human um, human as it is. It's just It's just a human thing to do. So when you look up, you see this plate, and then you look for the eyes. The eyes are sunk. The eyes have no emotion. The eyes convey no human characteristics or traits. So it's a lot like looking at a Terminator. They're all the same. They have no basic traits, and that's why they're so scary, because there's, no, there's nothing human about them. There's no remorse. There's no regret. There's no fear. There's no look of terror in those eyes. It's just this wall of armor, uh, possibly with an airsoft gun or something like that, maybe a riot shield or both. You don't know, and that's what makes it so scary. Maybe he's carrying a like a dummy fire axe or a dummy sledgehammer or you know, whatever have you. It conveys zero emotion. It conveys that this thing is scary. This guy means business. He is a walking tank. None of your weapons are gonna harm this guy. He is dangerous. And that's that's what you want to convey. Uh, on a first basis. Again, you, you're a friendly person. You don't want to hurt anybody. Again, I don't convey that. I don't condone that in <laughs> any certain way. But again, part of being a scary monster is being a scary monster, dressing up as one. Uh, and the part of this is is that it's not doesn't have tendrils. It doesn't have fangs. It doesn't have glowing eyes. It's something that's real. It's something that you see in movies and in war and all around the world. This is something relatable, and that's what gives military cosplay so much power is because this is real. This isn't Haruko from Fully Coolie. This isn't Luffy. This isn't Whis from uh, Ruby. This is, this, is, this is something that can happen. This is a concept that is possible. Uh, this isn't a spaceman. This isn't an alien. This is a soldier dressed up in riot gear and full battle armor ready to rock and roll, and that is what makes the Juggernaut so scary, or any military cosplayer so scary, 
because these are real possibilities in our life and in our you know in our reality now getting back to the mask i don't recommend if you are going to be a juggernaut or going to be wearing a mask like this do not paint it if it's painted yeah you can add personality again but if you're going to go for a t intimidation factor alone skulls sharks teeth all that stuff actually detracts again you want to keep it emotionless you want to keep it a void part of the thing about darth vader that made him so scary is that there was no emotion there it was all covered he was he was very well hidden from humanity he he had no humanity he was a just this walking hulking mass ready to destroy you none of your weapons could hurt him nothing could destroy him he was an enforcer a destroyer a you know an annihilator he was somebody to be feared not someone to be like oh hey i can go up and give this person a hug it's you know that's not what you want this is somebody who's like back off and that's again playing on psychology is important and again natural human psychology is looking for the eyes and when they can't see emotions there's a fight or flight response and one of our natural things to go for is the groin or the neck and when both of those are protected again you're not going to do a whole lot to this thing. You're not going to hurt this thing. There are no openings. This thing is like a like a seeing a knight and you're dressed in a leather tunic. There's not a lot you can do. And again, that's the message you're trying to convey is I am unstoppable. I am a juggernaut. And that's the point. And that's the beauty of this is filling this out and making it look appropriate. And when you have all those mags and all those small things all amassed into one giant colossus, you have the makings of a great and or perfect cosplay. And that's something you want. That is important. That is something that will help you along the lines of, um, you know, showing dominance. You want all the eyes to go right here. They want to see who you are. You want to make be the center of attention as a military cosplayer? Make yourself look good, make yourself presentable, make yourself look uniform, and you will stand out. In a riot or in a dangerous crowd or someplace dangerous, in a, in a war zone, they always go to the soldiers. People that look of authority, people who stand out, um, who are defenders and warriors. And that is the message you're trying to convey. You play on psychology, you win. Uh, this is an award-winning cosplay. This won me awards because it just had the it factor that people were looking for. This was at an anime con. Or this really isn't technically anime. This is a this is a uh, from a movie video game, and it's a concept. It's not even a real thing. But if you convey that, if you work on all those things, you've got it. Now, one final comment I want to make that can often make a cosplay is weapons. That can be a shield, a Nerf axe, a weapon like that, or an airsoft gun. Again, don't bring real weapons. And I'm going to come to this tape thing. Now, most places are not going to let you have a firearm in certain in, in certain cons. So, uh, make sure to check your registry, check all the vendors, check all the people that are in charge, I guess. Uh, not vendors, but check all the people that are in charge of the con. Contact them if you're unsure. Again, the best thing to do is to be sure. Contact when in doubt. So, talk to them and say, hey, what's what's allowed and what isn't allowed. And they will be like, hey, you can't bring guns. Don't bring guns. Do not bring weapons. Again, you can bring a shield, maybe a Nerf axe, something that looks not dangerous. So, no offensive weapons. But if they are okay with that, make sure to get, um, make sure to check in with security. Last, the security people I talked to at my local con put this little, uh, little zip tie on there to indicate that it wasn't working again. Take the batteries out, degas, uh, do whatever you must to make this non-firing. Disengage the trigger, put it on safety, lock something up with a rubber band, uh, maybe uh, take out the hopper. Make sure that people know that this is a non-firing airsoft gun, nerf gun, something like that. Because you don't want to hurt anybody. The last thing you want to do is be thrown in jail. And again, that's target number one if you're going to start some trouble. And, uh, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> but again, if they require an orange chip, keep the orange tip on. This one flew off uh, when I was playing. The cold gas broke the the seal and snap the, uh, the plastic and send it flying into a pile of orange leaves we couldn't find it um, this one kind of came off uh, but again um, depending on it you want a big gun for scarier cosplay smaller guns just depends this is a PPSH this is an M79 and this is a part of a ZB30 machine gun but again the gun can make the cosplay uh, thumper is a good one that's a grenade launcher um, submachine gun with a big barrel uh, drum magazine that's a great one too but a big freaking assault rifle or um, just a rifle in general carbines 
Or heck, the best to go is light machine guns, uh, which this is a barrel too, and again, it's it's kind of broken and taken apart, and I've been repairing it. But uh, anyway, you want to convey those messages, and a gun can really throw a cosplay together. Heck, I would love to have a mini gun, but I don't have three grand laying around. And of course, I'd want to buy one working because heck, who, wants, who doesn't want to play yourself with a mini gun? <laughs> That'd be so killer. But anyway, um, the cosplay, and when it comes to cosplay, airsoft, part of it is utility, being able to use it, um, psychology, being able to convey who you are and what you are, um, and, you know, presenting yourself, of course, presence, filling out the cosplay as this is the topic, uh, the weapons, it's just the off factor. If you got all the off factors coming down at once, you have got yourself made in the shade. You're good. You're good to go, and you don't need to worry about anything. Now, I can't mention everything in a video, and I know that there's a lot of stuff I may have missed, may have not talked about, and again, that's what you guys are for. If you have maybe some comments, questions, want to bring something up, or want me to mention something in a later video, that's the beauty of this. I can talk to you. So again, if you guys want to talk to me or want to bring something up, feel free to. I'm always open to conversation. I love you guys, and I appreciate you guys. But if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Share it around with your buddies to talk to them about it. Get a conversation going with them. Uh, again, I want to make sure to get rid of the misconceptions of military cosplay, as I'm a military cosplayer. That's my bread and butter. Uh, again, uh, start a conversation down below, like and subscribe, share this around, um, and I will see you in the next video. I'm RBPK Productions, known as Jesse, and I'll see you guys around. Take it easy, and remember, be safe. Always.